Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. 
Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name is Mike Hambly. Exit polls from Israel's general election put the two main parties neck and neck. But with 70% of votes counted, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to have edged ahead. The Central Election Committee puts his Likud party in the lead with 23.73%. Isaac Herzog's Zionist Union is on 19%. Aid agencies have begun flights to the Pacific Island state of Vanuatu, but flooding has prevented some planes landing. People on the island of Tana say food is running low. The cyclone caused widespread devastation. The UN has revised down the official death toll to 11. Indonesia has formally ended the search for debris from the Air Asia plane that crashed in the Java Sea in December. All 162 passengers and crew were killed. Rescuers found large parts of the plane and its flight data recorders, but at least 50 bodies are still missing. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. 
As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria 
are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. These are the very latest headlines. As the fighting in eastern Ukraine intensifies again, the presidents of Ukraine and Russia, they'll be sitting down with the French and German leaders trying to thrash out a peace plan. The new Greek government has won a confidence vote in its parliament on plans to renegotiate the country's international bailout. The vote comes ahead of Wednesday's emergency meeting of EU finance ministers, which will consider the Greek government's position. 46 people accused of belonging to a Belgian Islamist group that sent young men to fight in Syria are about to hear the verdicts. Prosecutors have accused members of Sharia for Belgium of being part of a terror organisation. Australia's anti-terrorism police have arrested two men who were allegedly planning a public beheading. The two were arrested in Western Sydney where officers are reported to have seized a hunting knife, a machete and a flag. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. 
This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. 
A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. This is BBC World News. I'm Tanya Beckett. Here are the headlines. The 114th US Congress has opened with Republicans controlling both the Senate and the House of Representatives. Party leaders are expected to challenge President Obama on issues like approval of the Keystone XL oil pipeline. A female suicide bomber has attacked a police station in Istanbul, killing herself and a Turkish police officer. A second officer was injured in the bombing in the Sultan Ahmed district, which is popular with tourists. And the price of oil has slipped to its lowest level in almost six years. The drop has spooked financial markets in Asia and Europe, as wider concerns are raised over slowing growth across the world from Europe to China. And Kurdish forces claim they've made significant gains against IS militants. They've been battling for four months over the border at town of Kobani and say they've taken a key district and now control 80%. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. 
The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. 
And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Danny Sinha. The latest headlines. 45 people have been arrested in Hong Kong after clashes. Police use pepper spray and batons to push back crowds trying to surround government headquarters. There are fresh hopes for a resumption of peace talks between the Colombian government and FARC after the rebels released an abducted army general. Ruben Dario Alzati has now been flown to Rio Negro along with two other freed hostages. The police chief in the Afghan capital, Kabul, has quit after yet another deadly suicide bombing targeting foreigners. In the latest attack, three South Africans were killed after Taliban militants entered a compound. And at the end of his visit to Turkey, Pope Francis urged Muslim leaders worldwide to clearly condemn terrorism carried out in the name of Islam. He also signed a joint declaration with Patriarch Bartholomew I. Those are your latest headlines on BBC World News. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kassig, also known as Peter Kassig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kassig, also known as Peter Kassig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. 
Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kasig, also known as Peter Kasig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kasig, also known as Peter Kasig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kasig, also known as Peter Kasig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kasig, also known as Peter Kasig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kasig, also known as Peter Kasig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker, more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kasig, also known as Peter Kasig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. 
President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker and more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kassig, also known as Peter Kassig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. These are our top stories. Islamic State militants have beheaded an American aid worker and more than a dozen unnamed Syrian military personnel. Abdul Rahman Kassig, also known as Peter Kassig, was kidnapped in Syria last year. A video of the killing was released on Sunday. President Obama said the murder was an act of pure evil. Investigators have recovered large parts of the Malaysia Airlines plane that was shot down in eastern Ukraine four months ago, including the wheels and fuel tanks. Nearly 300 people were killed when flight MH17 crashed in territory controlled by pro-Russian separatists. The European Commission will meet on Monday to decide how to contain an outbreak of a highly contagious strain of bird flu at a poultry farm in the Netherlands. 150,000 hens are being destroyed. The transportation of poultry and eggs has been banned nationwide for the next three days. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. 
The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing.
And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. This is BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. The latest headlines. There are fears more Syrian Christians have been kidnapped by so-called Islamic State militants than originally thought. Sources in the community now say as many as 200 civilians might have been abducted during raids in northeastern Syria on Monday. World football's governing body FIFA has announced it will not pay compensation to European clubs unhappy about plans to play the 2022 World Cup in November and December. The Greek government has suspended the country's professional football league because of violence during matches. Officials said there would be no matches next season unless clubs introduce security measures such as smart card ticketing. And there's been protests outside the Australian Embassy in Indonesia as a row escalates over the planned execution of two Australian nationals. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. 
Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. 
Latest headlines from BBC News. My name's Mike Embley. King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia has died. He was 90, he'd been in hospital for several weeks with pneumonia. He's been succeeded by his half-brother Salman, who is 79. King Abdullah came to power 10 years ago. He had been Saudi Arabia's de facto leader the, for a decade before that. The president of Yemen has resigned in protest at the takeover of the country's capital by Shiite rebels known as Houthis. It's not clear if Parliament will accept that decision. A Houthi leader has welcomed Mr. Hadi's decision and proposed setting up a presidential council to fill the political vacuum. The Japanese government is saying it's exploring every avenue to try to save two hostages who the jihadists of the group Islamic State say they're holding. A video believed to be from IS released on Tuesday demanded a ransom of $200 million to be paid within three days. The latest headlines from BBC News, I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of a three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. The latest headlines from BBC News, I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of a three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. The latest headlines from BBC News, I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of a three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. The latest headlines from BBC News, I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of a three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. 
The latest headlines from BBC News. I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of the three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. The latest headlines from BBC News. I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of the three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. The latest headlines from BBC News. I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of the three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. The latest headlines from BBC News. I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of the three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. The latest headlines from BBC News. I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of the three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. 
The latest headlines from BBC News. I'm Danny Sinha. Nearly a million people in the Philippines are in emergency shelters as Typhoon Hagapit moves slowly across the country, bringing heavy rain and wind gusts of more than 200 kilometres an hour. Three people are known to have died, but so far it has not resulted in the damage or casualties that many had feared. Hundreds of asylum seekers wanting to go to Australia are stranded in Indonesia after a new Australian government policy. Canberra announced two weeks ago that asylum seekers who registered for refugee status in Indonesia would not be eligible for resettlement in Australia. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have arrived in New York for a tour of the east coast of the United States. As part of the three-day trip, Prince William will visit the White House and meet President Obama. He's also expected to give a speech on combating illegal wildlife trafficking. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jutting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jutting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jutting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jutting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jutting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. 
Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jatting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jatting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jatting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jatting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines. The British banker Rurik Jatting uh, returns to court later today in Hong Kong after undergoing a psychiatric assessment. He's accused of murdering two Indonesian women who were found dead in his apartment three weeks ago. Australian police have charged a woman with attempted murder after she abandoned her newborn baby in a drain in Sydney. Police allege the baby may have been there for five days. The child is in a serious but stable condition in hospital. 
The wreckage of flight MH17 has been moved from the rebel-controlled part of Ukraine to the government-controlled city of Kharkiv. From there, it will be flown to the Netherlands for a detailed investigation. And the British driver Lewis Hamilton has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to take the Formula One World Championship for the second time. Those are the headlines here on BBC World. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a build-up of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a build-up of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a build-up of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a build-up of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered.
America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a buildup of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a buildup of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a buildup of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a buildup of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a buildup of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. Those are the headlines here on BBC News. Hello there, you're watching BBC News. I'm Babita Sharma. The headlines this hour. The ongoing battle for dominance of the Asia-Pacific moves to Beijing on Monday as leaders from around the region gather for their annual summit. Leaders will be weighing up rival proposals for different free trade areas supported by America and China. China is hosting the meeting for the first time in 13 years. Four months after the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over eastern Ukraine, a memorial service is due to be held in the Netherlands. 193 of the nearly 300 people killed in the crash were Dutch. On Saturday, the country's foreign minister said the remains of nine victims may never be recovered. America and the European Union have expressed concerns at reports of a buildup of forces around Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, where heavy fighting has been taking place between pro-Russia rebels and Ukrainian soldiers. 
Those are the headlines here on BBC News.